everyone, and welcome to the Heart Leader Podcast. I'm your host, Amber, and today I am so happy to have a very close and personal friend on the show, Alejandra Leoneza. Ale is a professional golfer from Mexico, and she found her love for the sport at the very young age of six years old. She has since been traveling the world following this passion, and it led to it being her career. To Ale, golf is what has given her the opportunity to dig deep into her spiritual journey. She loves the endless possibilities to expand and is hoping to inspire others through her own journey. She represented Mexico in the 2016 Rio Olympics and has been part of the LPGA for six years. She attended the University of Arizona, where she played for their golf team and was named Student Athlete of the Year during her freshman year and then team captain during her senior year. She is now going on her 10th year as a professional golfer. And today, Ale and I are gonna talk about what it's like to find balance in the life of a professional athlete. Ale, welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you here. Thank you, Amber. I'm so honored to be here and I appreciate so much the invitation to be a, a part of this great podcast. So thanks for having me. Absolutely. You know, when it comes to heart leaders, and you and I talk about it a lot, it's about shining your light so that others can say, hey, I really like what you're doing, or no, that doesn't resonate, but you're being your authentic self, right? So that exactly. people can be inspired by whatever that is. Yes, yes. And I think that's, that's what's great about this journey is we all get inspired by each other and we all um, we can all tune in to, oh, that resonates with me or I like how, you know, that person is sharing their light. I, I want to explore more of that possibility. So um, I think that that's a great gift we all have. Yeah. And you do it so well. Like you. you have been such an inspiration for young women, especially young women from your area. And so I just really, you know, how much I adore you. And I want to start <laughs> out you. by sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Yes, um, I've, been, I've been so lucky to, uh, to be able to impact people. And, and to me, it's, it's just a ripple effect of, you know, how I was inspired growing up and uh, by so many people around me. And I, I would say in golf, uh, my two main inspiration were Tiger Woods and Lorena Ochoa. And, uh, and as we were talking about, you know, giving and receiving, I, I was reflecting on it and, and, you know, we'll get more into that later, but, you know, I, I was looking at Tiger Woods example and how a lot of people would think like, Oh, you know, what he was doing, would be considered like selfish, you know, just doing all for himself, training and getting better and everything. But, but the way that I saw it is, you know, all that giving that he was doing for preparing um, was something that we all received in turn as inspiration. And, you know, and I think he, you know, he received the trophies and the tournaments and the reward of having worked really hard on his game but but I think you know when you really give so much to to yourself or your sport or your self-care then you're really helping others to receive that same inspiration to to better yourself and to do something good for yourself and then um, it impacts the community as well. I love that. And I love that you have still held on to someone that in the media got raked over the coals for decisions yes. in a personal life. I mean, let's just draw that out for what it is, right? Yes. Tiger yeah. had his moment where the media just didn't allow him to be human because mm -hmm. he was this sports icon. Yes. So you're in the same field, really. How do you balance that knowing that people are going to look at your personal life in some ways and 
look at your life overall, you have to have some balance in that giving and receiving that you were explaining. You're on the road all the time. You are going from place to place. There has to be that rest, that recovery, that balance between having a personal life and a professional life that everyone else gets gifted. How do you handle that? Yes. Yeah, that is so true. And I think with Tiger, it's, you know, tough because he had such a spotlight on him all the time. Um, but, but I think it's, it's like you said, it's a balance. You have to learn to separate the two. And, and for me, it's, it's, you just have to be aware of where you're putting your energy and your attention and, and knowing what you want to prioritize in each moment. Um, because I, I do think it's important to, to have a balance and, and the greatest indicator we have is, you know, our emotions. Like if we start feeling overwhelmed or, you know, stressed or sad or something, then we know we are out of balance. Um, so I think as athletes, we're constantly giving in training, planning, um, figuring out what you're going to eat how you're going to recover. So it, it could feel like a lot of giving. Um, so we have to, to really allow yourselves to take the time to receive as well so that we can put that effort back in there. So I, I think it's, it's like that figure eight um, balance, you know, and you, you sit back and you're like, okay, I'm going to rest. And I would see that as receiving or I'm going to let the results unfold without wanting to control everything. I, I would see that as, as receiving, you know, it's like you give your effort and everything that, that you could control. And then you just have to allow it to happen. And as you would say many times, you have to trust and allow. And, and then when you're in that trusting and allowing, then you can receive um, what the universe has to give back to, to what you put out there. So it's a constant like dance between giving and receiving. And um, I think we have to pay attention to where, where we are, are in our journey and, and see if we need, you know, to give a little more, or if we, if we are out of balance, how can I change this? Not just the action. Cause I think we're so focused on actions all the time and we are only valuing actions when it all starts in our thoughts and you know that's where we start to create so um i i think if we can realize that it's not just all that go 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 um then we can allow more things to flow back to us Awesome. I agree 100%. And I love what you said about things start in our thoughts, especially as a golfer. I know several golfers in my yes. life, and they always talk about how it's a mental sport because you're not really competing against other people. Although in your profession, there is competition in that way in some ways. But really, when you're out on the course, you're competing against yourself more yes. than anyone else. So how do you balance that part too? And I use the word balance a lot because it is that constant, as you said, almost like that figure eight where you have to understand the flow of that. So do you have any tips for golfers out there about how to create that initial thought or balance that mental space? Um, yes. Yeah. And like you said, golf is definitely so mental and, and that's why I, I have so much fun with it because I love the, you know, the physical part of it, but I also love the mental challenge of it and how you, um, I mean, you, you can control your, your state of being with your thoughts. So I would say what my suggestion would be that has helped me in the past is to know what kind of thoughts empower you and what kind of thoughts align you, you know, with your inner being and with, with your power. Because I think we live in a society where we get ideas thrown at us all the time. And it's like, 
look at this athlete and look at this artist and they said this and this sounds great so this must be the truth and so what I found and growing up that happened to me where if someone I looked up to made a statement from their point of view I took it literally yeah very literal and I was like oh like I'm feeling so much pressure with this kind of thought and so maybe what empower someone doesn't necessarily empower you so what I like to do is to have you know some sentences from um, maybe authors I like or uh, philosophers I like that help me to you know maybe feel more part of the whole um, that can be like okay I don't have the weight of the world on my shoulders or you know that for me it's I remember this this quote from uh, David Hawkins held me in a tournament where he said we have to remember we are the water and not the fish and it was like oh my gosh like it's it's so deep but it helped me to really embrace um, that concept of you know we are all one and And it's like, we are part of everything. So it's not like, oh, only what I do, it has such a big impact, but then you allow yourself to be part of the whole and, and kind of connect to your power through that. So, so that's what I would advise is that uh, people can find things that work for them and empower them so that they can feel strong with the thought they are holding in their mind. Yeah. So it's very individualized, yes. but there can be a similarity in that it's finding a thought that fits for you. Exactly. Yes. And, you know, maybe the same thought can help a number of people, but it's just paying attention to like, okay, you know, it's kind of like going to an ice cream store and trying all the flavors and then seeing which one you like. So uh, same thing with the thoughts. <laughs> That's a great analogy. I love yes. that. <laughs> I don't it's know. It's the Baskin Robbins like. of thoughts. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. So I do know you travel a lot and mm. you spend a lot of time with the people that then you have to go on to the course and in many ways compete with. Yes. And then you come back from competing with them and you're staying in the same places sometimes you might want to go out how do you really find a flow with turning it on turning it off or doing what you said which is having that balance of give and receive within yourself for what you need to have which is your rest or the way that you eat and not blending in with how others are doing it, because sometimes it's easy to go along with groupthink. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, again, you, you have to know yourself very well. And I think that takes a little bit of practice. Um, because it's, you know, we all want to be a part of something and, you know, feel like we belong somewhere or a part of a community And so when, when I'm competing, then yes, we, it's a lot of the same people. So then you, you know, you get to know each other and um, there can be that social aspect, but I think knowing yourself and for me, what helps me is to picture how I want to feel, you know, the next day with the decisions that I've made. And so I, I know from past experience that maybe If I spend that extra hour socializing, maybe I didn't get that downtime that I know is important for me to wind down and relax and meditate. Um, so I think it's, it's just envisioning how you want to feel with the, the decisions you made um, the next day and, you know, feeling like I gave myself that downtime and that meditation and you know, time to just kind of relax and, and have me time. Um, I know that helps me to be more calm for the competition in the next day. So, so just building on that, on that feeling, you kind of start to get more momentum on that. And 
um, and you build on it. And, and, you know, it's not that the same thing works a hundred percent of the time. Maybe there's a day where you're like, Oh, I need to, you know, talk to a friend or kind of disconnect. And so, so that's why you have to be very in tune with yourself and, and know yourself as well as you can so that you know what you need in each moment yeah are there any is there anything that you can share about how you got to know yourself to this level where you can do these things not that it's ever perfect Mm -hmm. for any of us because Mm -hmm. so far I haven't found anyone that I've come across and all the people I've talked to that don't still say that there's more that they'd like to know about themselves. Oh, so yeah. I'm not seeking perfection, but is there something that you could share about how you got to this stage where you can do the things that you do? And mm-hmm. um, yes. And I, I think it's so true. It's we're all in this journey and it's, you're always discovering more about yourself. And, and for me, that's, part of why I love golf so much because you never reach perfection. It's like you always have it. There's so many areas to the game that you can always improve a little bit and one of them, and it just makes it a lot of fun and and challenging. Um, But I'd say the way that I got to know myself better and, and some of my friends ask me is I, I do a lot of things on my own. Um, and I, I think growing up, you know, I was always part of the, the national team or, you know, then in college, um, the university team, and you're always part of something. And then when I turned pro, you kind of on your own. And, and I started having this, this need to just kind of explore just more what it meant to be on my own. So I started getting interested in hiking and um, and just doing little things like, oh, I want to go to this concert. And, you know, I reached out to all my friends and last minute no one could go. And then you're like, you have two choices. You miss the concert you really wanted to go or you go on your own <laughs> and have a good time. So it's like little things like that. So then I went to the concert and then I, you know, made friends there and had a great time. And then it's like, oh, I want to see this movie. No one wants to go. Okay, I'll go by myself. And, you know, I, I saw a quote from, sorry, uh, from Leonardo DiCaprio that said, if, if you can sit at a restaurant by yourself, sit at a movie by yourself, then you are gaining more than you realize. Um, And then I took it to another level where I started doing trips on my own. Uh, There was even a trip that I was really looking forward to. And someone asked me like, hey, can I come along? And I was like, I I like you a lot, but no. (laughs) (laughs) Love you, but no, thank you. Love you, but no. (laughs) But because I was seeing it more as a trip to get to know myself more. And I think the the more you can be comfortable with who you are and, you know, the the things that you like, the things that work for you, the things that align you, then the better tools you have um, in your profession or in your life in general. So for me, it's been a journey of doing a lot of things on my own and really listening and trying to tune into that intuition, um, to see like, oh, I want to go here. And, and all the time we're making decisions. And, you know, that's one of the big powers we have is that choice to say, I want to go here. I want to do this. Um, and, and the more time you spend exploring that um, without the opinions of more people or what, without doing what you think you should do, then the more you can tune into that intuition. Yes. And when you talk about things, and I know you had mentioned it earlier, like social media, Mm -hmm. and all of the different inputs coming at us, always, all the different opinions, the different thoughts, 
Yes. Being able to take time to yourself and just shut it all out is very helpful. Mm -hmm. But as you sat with those in those times where you were on your own and you were feeling through some of the things that we've always been taught, like it's better to give than to receive. We get that a lot, right? Yes. At least I grew up with that all the time. (laughs) Did you ever come across that and need to feel your way through that in order to find this balance that you've been talking about or the equilibrium that has worked for you? Yes. Yes, for sure. And um, and that actually came up recently with my caddy. We were at a tournament and... And we were talking, you know, because Christmas is coming up and and he he was saying like, oh, I, you know, a lot of times I feel uncomfortable receiving gifts. Um, I really like to give gifts, but I don't feel as comfortable receiving. And and, you know, sometimes these things come through us and you don't know where they came from. And I looked at him and I was like, well, receiving is part of giving. And he just <laughs> he was like, I'm going to need a moment with that. And, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't even know where that came from. But then another one came through and it was like, you know, the more you receive, the more you can give. And, and it's like, I think right now the concepts that we've grown up with are being challenged so much in our culture. So, um, so a lot of things are showing to work that are almost opposite to what we were taught. Um, So, you know, I I think it's been fun to entertain thoughts that are so different than, than that, you know, it's better to give than to receive. And, and I think you, you were saying, is it possible to, to give without receiving? And, and I think, the answer is no, because it's it's always a flow. Like if you, wh- when you give, I think people say that, okay, maybe you're giving a material object, but you are receiving the satisfaction of doing something for somebody else. So, you know, that's receiving in itself. I think we're so used to only counting what the materialized part of things and that we are, not considering the energy we are receiving in exchange or, you know, um, if we can tune into that receiving, you know, I see appreciation as receiving because you are, I mean, it is because you're just appreciating what you have in this moment. And so, so in that way that you, you can then, give something else in exchange whether it's energy time uh, a smile or you know something else I think we are always in that constant state and and words can be confusing um, because I don't think it's possible to just give 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 all the time and uh, we just have to be open and realize that receiving can be really powerful as well because then we can continue that cycle and that constant exchange yeah and as you said that whole infinity symbol i'm going to keep going back to that visual because it it is that you can't go to one if it's too lopsided on one side then you end up with an eight and not infinity (laughs) right right or or it's yeah very big on one side yeah and not the other and Um, and i think um oh sorry just to go back to that question another thing that i was thinking on is along the lines of the more you give or it's better to give than in sports, that culture of no pain, no gain. I think that has been another sentence that has been, at least in my case, kind of hard to deal with because I think the words, how you use them or how you um, digest them can uh, can affect because then we think like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not doing enough. I'm not, you know, um, sacrificing enough. And, and I think that that can also block that flow of, of energy where, you know, not everything is in the actions. And, and I think in its 
like we were talking before, and it's to start in our thoughts so that we can then take the actions we desire. But we are, if we are only acting on what we think we're supposed to do and we're doing it automatically, then it's not as powerful than if it is coming from what our inner being is you know, guiding us to do. So of course you have, you're going to take action and, and it's, it's work you have to do, but it's not just like the mindless work that we grew up thinking we had to do. Oh my gosh. That's incredible. I love hearing that one coming from you because I know you live it. It's not just that you're saying it. I see it in you. I've yes. seen it in you for years. And so it's inspiring from that standpoint because it gives those who are growing up now and looking forward to desiring a career in your field something different to look toward, right? Yes. Because it has always been go see this coach, go see this coach, look at the mechanics, look at this. And not that there's anything wrong with that, all of that needs to be included. But what about your connection to the course? Yes. What about how it feels to be in nature as you're doing this? There's all these other components that hadn't been talked about for so long. The energy aspect mm -hmm. that you bring to it that you're now just talking about so openly so that younger people coming up through, it won't be such a taboo. It won't be like, what? What yes. do you mean? <laughs> and so thank you for leading the way in that way. Oh, well, thank you for helping me and guiding me through, through that journey and, you know, helping me to be open to it because I, this is something that has just been, all of these are kind of recent discoveries for me. And even though I always felt like there was something else, I'm like, there's gotta be, you know, growing up, I, I could feel something that I couldn't put words to it. And, and, you know, there was that feeling of inspiration. And so I think we, the more we can acknowledge that and recognize that that is there, the more we can use it and we can, you know, enjoy it as part of life and not so much as an um, external concept. Yeah, I agree. And can you talk then a little bit about, because you'd, you'd mentioned the energy flow and mm -hmm. that we are, we're very focused, especially, I love social media. I think it is one of the greatest tools that we have as long as it's used as a tool and not a weapon. <laughs> yes. But it is very physically driven, right? It's like here, it has to be something in the material world that is a return. But yes. you had mentioned it isn't always material. It can be energetic, what you receive. Can you give some examples of what it means to you for there to be an energetic return? Yes. And yeah, I'm building on, on that social media that I was thinking too is, you know, the way that we can connect more to all that energy and, and all of that is through being present, right? So being here and now. And I, I have kind of a, a struggle with my relationship with social media because it's like there's so much great information, but then there's so much just information in general. It's like overflow. And the other day I was thinking, you know, all of our power is here and now and everything we're seeing there is somewhere else it's there and then so it's not here and now and so it's something that happened in the past and something that happened somewhere other than where we are so i think we have to be <clears throat> very conscious of how we use it like you said as a tool and not let it make us feel like we're not doing enough or we don't have enough or you know it's all based on, yes, the physical manifestation of things. Um, so, so, yes, I, th I think there just needs to be awareness of 
you know, what it is, how it can help us. And when we are getting to a place where it's not helping us and we're like spiraling and you're just scrolling and you can't stop. And yeah. so, when it crosses yeah. the line to addiction and you're living in the past, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the past, and then you're living in comparison too. So, so that's when you catch yourself and you're like, okay, am I in my power? Am I in a, power, in a place where I feel powerful? And, and that's something that it's hard to measure, you know, with, objects or something so going back to that energy is you but you just have to kind of like feel your way through it and and the more you practice it then the better you are at tuning in to what's giving you energy and what's making you feel excited and what's making you feel inspired so um but yes um, an example i would think on the golf course is um yeah, just just days where, you know, you for me, I I usually have a technical focus, you know, that kind of grounds me, because uh, it's not like we can just live in the spiritual or energetic world, you know, we're in the physical world, so it's again, it's a balance. So I usually have something technical that kind of grounds me in my swing, um, and then I have you know a sentence or a concept that helps me to connect with that power. And, um, and I feel a lot when I'm, I can't really get to a good place mentally, then I just focus on my feet, you know, feeling the ground under my feet or feeling the sun or feeling the temperature. So um, you can use your senses a lot to bring you back to, to that present moment and um, and then it's, it's, again, you have to choose to, to pick the, the right focus so that you can feel that energy um, exchange with your game or, you know, with the, per the people you're playing with. And I've, you know, I had rounds where it was so free, like I just, you know, kind of was playing just for the joy of playing. And I think that's my favorite place to be because, you know, results don't matter, but they happen. <laughs> so it's, and uh, so it's a balance because then the next day you're like, okay, how do I do it again? And <laughs> so that's, that's the tough part of it. But, but then when you're in that place, then you just, um, you, I had that technical thought, but then I, I had that, relaxed flowing uh feeling and and then you then you start receiving information like when you when i'm at least i can only talk for me but when i'm in that place it's like okay i'm giving you know my intention my focus but then when i'm open enough then i can receive the information and it's almost like i'm being told what the break is going to be for that putt or I'm in between clubs, like seven or eight, and you can just feel like, oh, it's a seven. And, and when you're tuned into that, then you start really receiving. And, and you receive that guidance. And, you know, I think it just comes from your intuition, you receive that, and then you can give and you can create with your game, which you're creating shots, and you're um, creating like a painting on the golf course. So, uh, so I think for me, it's, that's, that's the best way to play and the way that I enjoy it the most. Would you say that that's what a lot of athletes have always called being in the zone, but they just didn't know how to describe it? Yes. Yes. I think that's exactly right. And because when you're in that state and you're, you're in the zone, like you're only in the present and you know, there's this lightness to it. And that's what led me to think, you know, all of this result-based culture is only taking you out of your chance to be in the zone because, you know, it's, it's like they're forcing you to think a certain way or forcing you to do certain things. But then when, when you're in that zone, like you do those things, but you're not like trying, I think. 
there is sometimes there can be too much trying and not enough, you know, trusting and letting it happen. I like that. So as you're talking about a results-based culture, mm -hmm. it sounds like your definition of success is no longer based on results. It yes. may have shifted. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, and that's and that's something that just recently, you know, I I started to to notice. Like I was kind of rebelling. Like, you know, why do I have to fit this this certain category? Like, why why do I have to have this title to be defined successful? And as you and I were talking the other day, um, without realizing, I was like, oh, okay, so. I think the most important thing for me is that connection and that feeling of, you know, satisfaction with, with myself, with the actions, with the thoughts that I've chosen. Um, so, I mean, the easiest way to describe it for me is if, if you're happy or if you're in, in joy, like feeling joy, then you're successful because then you are connected. And when you are connected, you can, act in a more inspired way and and just you know things just start happening uh rather than like making it happen and uh which yes i think at times can be great to use that determination and you know it can be adversities where you're going to need that but i think the more you can be connected to that power then the more successful you are and so that's something that I'm just starting to explore and um, and it's, you know, it's a fun place because it feels like the possibilities are even bigger than any result you can envision. It sounds like you just have all these tools and it's about finding the when to use which one. So if it's about, okay, I have to deliver now and I have to overcome adversity then I have acquired the awareness for how I navigate through that best. Yes. If it's about being in the flow and enjoying, then this is how I attain the best results for me in this. Mm -hmm. How did you go about gathering all of those skills? Because they are skills. It's not as though you came out of the womb and knew all of these things <laughs> instantly, unless you were like a prodigy and then... <laughs> I'm pretty no, impressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, then I don't think I'd, I'd be here, but <laughs> uh, I think experience, I mean, for me, I'm, some, I'm someone who learns through experience. So, you know, I, I love information and theories and everything, but it's not until I actually do it and live it for myself, then I can actually kind of integrate that lesson and and feel what that looks like for me. And, um, and yeah, just trying to give myself as many different experiences as possible. I, I love the outdoors and, you know, that that's why I love golf, but in my time off, I, like I was telling you, I love hiking. I just love looking for, you know, places when I'm in tournaments, like, Oh, i have some friends that like to go hiking. So, okay, let's plan this hike there on Monday when it's our day off. And, um, and there was, I had a recent experience where I went hiking with a friend of mine and it was, it was really foggy and we were like, it'll be fine. Cause the view, I mean, the picture looked amazing. So we were like, we are going there. But it was a little foggy and we're like, I'm sure it'll, it'll be gone by the time we get up there. So we just keep going up the mountain and, and then we get to this point where it's like, you can keep going up or you just accept that you're not going to see anything <laughs> and you go down and we're like, no, I think we can get just past the fog. I, I think we're really close. <laughs> and we, we saw can do it. Come on. <laughs> um, and we saw these, people that were at the base of that, you know, uh, division uh, in the trail. And they're like, you guys are going to keep going up. And we're like, yeah. And they're like, you're brave. 
and we're like yeah and I'm like okay maybe it's not so safe but we just kept going and finally we reached a point where like okay once we see snow that's when we'll turn back <laughs> and and we did and the fog was still there so we're like okay we, we just gotta accept it you know today was not a clear day and that's fine so we start walking back and then my friend's like Ali this doesn't look familiar we didn't walk through this sandy stuff on our way up and at this point we had maybe like 30 or 40 yards of visibility so I mean we could literally only see the trail the path right in front of us we couldn't get our bearings and I'm like it was a moment of fear like oh my gosh we I mean those people try to warn us we are going to get lost in the mountain and then like you know her family came to my mind my family (laughs) it's like these thousand thoughts started rushing in and then all of a sudden it was like that okay you have to decide how you're gonna face this moment and it was like no let's uh, let's turn this around. You know, if, if I start worrying, that's not going to help me. You know, that's, you know, number one rule is don't panic, <laughs> which I was starting to. And so all of a sudden, then I got this really positive energy. And, you know, at this point we were pretty tired, but um, I was like, no, we're, we're right here. We're about to find the, the path. I know it. Uh, let's just let's go up to those rocks. Those look familiar. <laughs> and, you know, and at this point, I was kind of like, not sure if they looked familiar or not. But I was like, we, it's going to be fine. And we get there, we start walking. And then my friend is like, oh, I see the trail. And we got so excited. So we got back on the trail, and we were able to get down the mountain. But, but I think that moment was just so key in choosing you know, that, you know, how are you going to react to this life situation? Because, you know, we could have just freaked out and be like, you know, we're lost when the, the sun was coming down. And um, so I, I think that was, for me, that was an example in my life that every moment, you know, you have that choice. How are you going to react? How are you going to face this? What tools are you going to, uh, resort to and get from your toolbox to face this challenge so yes what an incredible story and I'm glad you didn't get lost in the mountains I hadn't heard that story yet. <laughs> so I'm sitting here going ah. <laughs> yes I know that was only like two months ago and yeah we were I mean there was so much appreciation when we <laughs> when we found the path and and just being like okay we're fine which you know, we hadn't been climbing that long, but we're not experts. So to us, it felt like forever. Um, but then once we found the way, then it, it was fine. But yes, it was a great, great experience. But isn't that the way of life sometimes, though? Like you yes. veer off path mm-hmm. thinking, oh, I can do this. I'll be <laughs> fine. Everyone's <laughs> telling me that, like, mm, you might want to think about that. Right. But we do it anyway. Yes. And it's okay. And it's how we adapt to that, the choices that you make, as you said, that will yes. either lead us back to the path we chose mm-hmm. or keep us lost. So right. that's an amazing story just for life itself. Right. And, and I think, you know, I was so much more, um, I gained so much more by having lived through that than if I just turned back and said, oh, you know, today wasn't the day. But, but having lived that extra adventure that just added so much more to my life that, you know, even if people, of course, we're here, we're sitting here talking about it, with, so it was fine. <laughs> but uh, even if people are like, no, don't go there. And, you know, I'm not saying, you know, take irresponsible risk, but if there's something that you feel called to, then you can explore it, you know, maybe be a little smarter about leaving a trail behind you, but (laughs) (laughs) probably some breadcrumbs back. Yeah. (laughs) But, 
uh, for me, uh, that's what I meant when I said, you know, I learned through experience and, um, and I think I, it was much more powerful having lived that. Great advice. So as we start to wrap up here, one of the things that you had called out and I mentioned even as I was introducing you is that golf is a way for you to dive deeper into exploring your spiritual connection. Yes. Can you share with us what that means for you? How do you use golf in that way? Because I, you know, I've heard some people say it's like a spiritual experience, but that's it. Like it doesn't go further than that. For you, it is, it is much deeper. And I know this just from our discussions. So can you share? Yes. Um, yeah, I think it, it started since I began playing when I was six. Um, I just fell in love with the game immediately. And something that I found and maybe I haven't shared as much is I, you know, I, there weren't too many uh, girls that were playing golf at the time in my club. And, um, and then I was like too intimidated to play with the boys <laughs> at that point when I just started. So I would play, go out and play on the part three course by myself a lot. And, and what I found is uh, there were so many like sensations and things that I still remember where I'd be playing and I would feel this like change of like this warm breeze go by me and, and I would be like, oh, I don't know what that was, but I was different than, you know, the environment that was here before. And I just keep going and, and I just felt like I was, I had more people with me. I, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but maybe not physically, but I just felt like there were more beings around me and um, just enjoying the, the fact that I was enjoying the game. And, and I just connected with the spirit of golf, which, you know, you and I have talked about. And I worked also on Vision 54, and they talk about the, the spirit of golf. And that's the first time I, t I saw that an academy was talking about it. And I think more people are starting to connect to that, where it's like this field, you know, that, um, that it has just the essence of the game. And for me, I, I felt like I would connect to that and get inspired and, and just get this, um, this feedback or this um, reads as I was describing, you know, this breaks this way, or it was like an exchange, like a giving and receiving um, of energy. And, and for me, like, it, that's what kept me into it. Just the fact that I could work on my game and get better and then get out there and, and then connect with the golf course and connect with the shots and get that feeling of the club face, that solid feeling that is, you know, like that sweet spot. Um, that's what kind of kept me coming back and, and something that I re really reconnected with um, as we work together, it's like, yes, that, that's a very strong part of my game that I enjoy is that um, hard to describe feeling of connectedness and of high energy that, that I can get when I play golf. So it's more of an inspiration that um, I can feel when, when I play and it's, you know, you feel all the elements, the wind and the sun and the grass and the trees and everything. Um, so, so yeah, it's definitely a balance of that. And then the, the technical aspect, which I think is also very important because it can empower you to find what better ways um, or easier ways to find that sweet spot. And then it's, you get the best of both worlds. So, so for me, that's, that's kind of how it's been. And, and I feel like, you just get this guidance and this, this pull. It's almost like they're pulling you like, you know, go this way. And, um, 
you play this shot and it's you kind of tune into that uh intuition so yes. yeah i know my partner austin always says golf is the sport that gives the best analogy for life because it is all about being in the present moment you can't think about the shot that you just had you can't think about the next shot it is yes. always about the present shot Exactly. It's, and it is balancing that physical with the energetic. Yes. And it's it's all about the present shot. And, you know, I think Jack Nicholas said the most important shot is the next one. Or I can't remember if it was him, but that's a famous quote in golf. That the most important shot is the next one. The most important moment is the next one, you know, meaning this one. And And I think in golf, so much of it is how you recover from the things that happen, from mistakes you made. And, you know, you can really relate that to life is how do you go from that place that you put yourself in? How do you recover? How, what is the best shot you can play in your life from there? Or what's the best way to get off a path that you wandered onto <laughs> yes. or off of? Exactly. Like in the fair way of life. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so many golf analogies. Yes, exactly. So, um, so yeah, I'm very, very fortunate to to do that as um, as my sport. And yes, thank you for letting me share that. Of course. And my final question for any young women who are starting out in this golf career or desire to make it their career. Do you have any advice for them? Anything that you wish someone would have told you when you were starting out? Yes. Um, I would say is you can look at role models, uh, but don't try to imitate them exactly. And, and don't compare yourself to them or to your competitors. I do see you know, a lot of the parents and all they want to do is help their kids. But, you know, they're saying like, oh, look at what they're doing. Uh, you know, you should be practicing more like her or you should be doing more, more of that. And I think starting out, it's important to recognize what works for you. And the only way to know it is to try a lot of different methods and a lot of different ways to practice. You know, some people like results oriented practice and that's fine some people like more feel oriented practice so um for me like i would say keep it fun uh growing up i played a lot of games whether it was with people or by myself like i would just make up games in my head be like okay i'm gonna i'm not gonna leave until i can do this uh you know make this many in a row or things like that but just make it fun for yourself and and I'd say don't compare yourself to others too much um, and, and just kind of like try to think outside the box a little bit. Don't, don't follow like a certain path that you think like this is how every step of the way has to go because I have friends that are professional that started when they were 15 years old and then I have friends that start when they were two years old. So there's not just one path for everyone. So I would say keep it fun. Um, do a, try a lot of different things to find out what works for you and what makes you feel the most powerful or the strongest or the most inspired. And because I think that's a really important part is that you feel that you're doing it for the love of the game and, and as something you know to better yourself or whatever your reason is, but. But don't do it for someone else because that, that's where it can get challenging. So if, you, if they feel pressure from the outside, then you know, try to find something that you can find a connection with, with yourself and the game um, so you can grow in that and expand on that. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, no problem. And these women and young ladies can follow you as you continue on in your career too. We'll make sure that there's posts of how they can get to your links and how they can follow you included with this podcast. Yes. So thank you, my friend, for being here. I love you dearly. 
and look forward to our next personal conversation. Yes. Thank you, Amber. I love you too. And thank you so much for, for inviting me and allowing me to share a part of my journey. And, and yeah, I'd be happy to, you know, answer any questions if there are um, any, um, any players wanting to get better. Um, I'm happy to answer some questions. That's wonderful. Is the best way for them to get a hold of you? They can send emails to us and I can forward them to you or is there another avenue you would prefer? Um, yes, we, we can do that or um, direct message on Instagram. Okay. We can share that. So we'll include all of that. And if anybody has questions or would like to get a hold of you, then we'll be sure that they can. Yes, sounds good. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in to the Heart Leader podcast. I am your host, Amber, and I look forward to seeing you in our Suivera community. Mm-hmm.